Welcome back to part two of my new automated image editing post-production system for that just calls everything for you, edits everything for you. You don't gotta do anything. We've spent uh, like 3% of a battery so far. Welcome to part two, where we are going to be going through actually Imagine, which is AI image editing, uh, which sounds a little scammy. It sounds like it's too good to be true, but um, it's, it's real, it's real, I promise you. And let's get to editing without, without touching a single slider. It's good stuff, man. Welcome to part two. So part one, we went through Aftershoot. If you're not familiar, you can head back to that video if you want, or if you're just here for the editing, that's cool too. What Aftershoot did is it selected all these images automatically. So I threw 2,514 images at it. It selected 855 and marked these as duplicates. Bunches closed eyes, bunches blurred, uh, and then sneak peeks if you want them. I, I don't use those, but you can if you want. And basically what it does is it gives you just all the images that you should have that you can edit from. And you start with uh, a much easier gallery. You're probably still gonna uh, unselect a few images and make your final gallery a little bit tighter. Um, but I guess my process for this is that I'm going to kind of leave this with a little bit of room still. I'm going to throw all those images out of Imagine and I'm going to do a final call once I actually have all of those images back. Um, I think maybe one step I didn't mention yesterday, uh, have a look at uh, the gallery, make sure there's nothing missing. In my experience so far, it hasn't missed anything that's been important. Uh, I used this all my last season and uh, it did very, very good, including all the elements from a wedding that, that I, I need to be there. Another quick thing to mention, uh, the focal offer. So back in January, we did a crazy, insane offer that will never exist again. Uh, the second best offer that Focal is going to do, what Focal does, they built my website for me. Um, they can build your website for you as well. Uh, they're doing an offer. It's kind of in part with WPPI. Uh, by the end of the month, if you sign up for it, so it's $80 to secure your spot and that $80 is your first month payment. Um, but that payment doesn't start until the first month of your website actually being live. And what they will do is they'll have a call with you and they will actually go and they will build a website for you. And uh, it's a 100% money back guarantee. So if you don't love exactly what they built for you or you can't get to the point that you're happy with it. Um, it's a hundred percent money back guarantee. But in my experience, the first draft that they make for you is pretty much good to go uh, with a few small tweaks and you'll be live on the internet. Focal also comes with an incredible backend system that is built specifically for photographers. Uh, Lachlan mentioned in a video that we did last week in Vegas that a lot of people were coming over from systems like HoneyBook or things that are just very, very complex and kind of overwhelming that they're built for. Yeah, like a photographer can use it as a, a backend a CRM customer relationship relationship, you do your bookings, your contracts and everything, um, that you can use it, yeah. But it's built for a much broader audience than that, that a bakery down, down the street can be using the same system as you. Uh, Focal is built specifically just for photographers and it is uh, the everything that you need and very easy and not overwhelming to set up. So you just, uh, I don't know, there's, there's really no setup. You look at it and you're like, cool, I understand this. I'm ready to go. Uh, again, 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like it, head on over to the page. There's a link in the description below. If it is after the month of March in 2022, you can head on over to bookfocal.com slash Taylor Jackson and whatever the current offer is that we have kind of going on will be there. Um, I'm going to suspect that nothing this good is ever going to come back, um, even for like a Black Friday sale. Um, so because the, I guess Focal's in the beginning stages of, of being a business, uh, you're getting incredible deals. We saw incredible deals in January and another incredible deal. So get on it now. Otherwise you're gonna have to pay full retail, um, which is honestly quite expensive. All right, let's get to it. So here we are after shoot. It's called everything, all the images that I want. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to export them. And I am going to click this Lightroom classic button here. Uh, Capture one. I'm going to be doing a little bit more with Capture one over the next couple of months. Um, I feel like it's something that maybe I've neglected and that I think it is important. Um, today for this example, I feel like most of us in the wedding space use Lightroom classic. So we, we click that button. Here it goes. Just gonna open this up and you can click import. And here we are in Lightroom with all of the images. And uh, what you're gonna do, that's it. You've done it. You've, do you've done the edit. And then you're gonna close your catalog. Step number two, do you really wanna quit? Yeah. Then you're gonna load up Imagine AI, which is just right here. Um, and uh, yeah, recent catalogs should be under there. If it's not, you can just browse it and find where your catalog is. Um, make different catalogs for, you don't have to, but to keep your brain organized, I feel like it's good practice. Make different catalogs for each wedding. And maybe this is the oversimplified version. What Imagine will do is 
basically if you have 5,000 images in Lightroom catalogs you can upload you can upload them and it will learn exactly what you do in what how you edit um, you have to make sure that those galleries are consistent that you make the same choices in the same environments otherwise your profile might be I feel like mine is kind of all over the place because I've been using a bunch of different uh, editors as far as uh, outsourcing goes over the past couple of years um, so building my profile actually takes me that I have to select specific galleries and, and put them together in order to get a cohesive profile if you feel like you are a consistent editor and you have 5,000 images it will build a profile for you and if that sounds overwhelming to you you can go down here and you can select a very specific uh, I guess editing style so clean and crisp um, if you go over to the imagine AI website um, you'll actually notice that they have talents and the talents are uh, individuals such as John Branch and Susan Stripling um, so John Branch if you want his kind of natural feels look or Susan Stripling I feel like mine uh, I would say that this is a very um, standard base edit and I'd be very happy with it um, what I actually do so this is kind of what I did also when I used a physical outsourcing team was that I would have kind of that baseline edit done and then I would have a preset that would go on top of that. It wouldn't adjust any of the sliders, that it would leave all of those alone, but it would change some of the colors in order to make it kind of what I want. Um, the way you do that is that if you have a preset that you like, you can either edit the first image with it and then when you uh, select all, and when you hold Command S to sync uh, those images, you just deselect exposure and uh, everything like that. And then it will just do everything that's not the exposure and uh, black point and white point and everything like that. Um, so that's one way to do it. Or you can just save a profile that just doesn't affect those things as well. So if you have a preset that you like or maybe like one of my presets um, you can do that so that's kind of my finishing to this um, I could train this profile to do everything that I want but I feel like as a startup and as kind of a test case that this is a much easier way to get kind of your your, your feet wet into the imagine AI system so I can use Susan uh, maybe let's let's hear from Susan briefly about imagine AI oh, it's actually that's really nice so I have been editing images <laughs> in and out of Lightroom for over 20 years now at this point. And the one question people always have is, why does this take so long? How can I do this faster? And how can I do this more reliably? Because there's a terrible element of human error. And I know that I found myself editing late at night. Things look great. I look at them the next morning and I'm like, what has happened? You can see the steady progression of my editing getting worse as I got more tired. And I always just thought, in jokingly, what if I could teach a robot to do this for me? because you need to remove the human error. So when I started hearing about Imagine AI and what it could do, I actually avoided it for a while because I thought it was too good to be true. And then too many people told me how amazing it was and so I tried it. And I took a bunch of back catalogs and I uploaded them and I taught my profile, I think with about 6,000 images. First wedding that I sent out that I got back within like 15 minutes, which blew my mind, was 99% perfect. Because you're not just throwing it out into the ether and hoping this bot gets it right. You've literally taught it to edit at the best of your editing ability. So what I was sending up was finished catalogs. They were done. So they learned to be perfect and finished and done. And now I don't even edit my own previews by myself. I send them up to AI and I get them back because I know that what I'm getting is something that's 99% of the way there. I spend almost no time tweaking in the, in the after parts of things and you can fine tune it. That's the great thing. So if I was getting things back, and mostly for me, it was silhouettes. You know, AI was trying to figure out what I wanted with a silhouette, so I taught it over and over and over again, and now it almost knows better than I do. And it's always reliable, because there is not going to be any 2 a.m. in the morning editing not getting it right. So it has sped up my business significantly. My weddings are done by the Tuesday after now. I have them uploaded, not delivered, because I don't want to, you know, give that impression that it's that easy but everything is uploaded my emails are scheduled to go out several weeks in the future and I can walk away I'm here at WPPI right now I'm completely caught up being completely caught up is an unreal thing as a wedding photographer it has saved me money it's made my studio manager's job easier and honestly it's the tool that the single tool that I wish I'd had for the past 20 years of my business I can't even think of how much time I would have back let's just not think about that at all all right, so now that we've heard from Susan, that was uh, from an upcoming project that we're gonna be doing in Las Vegas. So let's go back over here. Um, I'm going to include the rating. So as you saw uh, when my Lightroom was open down here, uh, that I had all of my five star files, all the five stars were the, the final select. So I only really want the five stars to be included. Um, it's not gonna select anything else. So I think that that is fine for me to go from. Clean and crisp, Susan Stripling here. Um, you can select any of those. You can look through the styles. You can explore the styles and figure out what is the best for you. And then you click this, uh, this little check mark here. 
and you are good to go. Send it. What this does is it is going to, from my understanding at least, it's going to build kind of those DNG smaller files and it's actually gonna send those off. Those are gonna be edited and come back for you. And then I'll be back in nine minutes to show you the next step of what's going on here. Here we go, 99%, 100%, zero minutes remaining. And now it is all on their side and uh, you'll get your edits back a lot sooner than you think. How, how long will it be? Let's find out. All right, it has been all of five minutes and I have just received my edits back and here they are, LG. Let's start the download now. And that took about nine seconds. All it's doing is downloading the XMP files. I feel like it's also very bright. I feel like my hair should have, should have fixed my hair before this video. And now I open the Lightroom catalog. And that's it. It's done. We'll go over here to develop mode and uh, we'll see what they've done. So as you can see, all the sliders are moved. Clarity is moved, all kinds of things. So this is, again, Susan Stripling's edit. Here we go. And as you can see, everything clean and crisp edit. For me, as I mentioned, so this is kind of my base clean line edit. I didn't train the system to edit exactly as I would. Uh, my presets that I use, I typically put them just kind of on everything. So what I'm actually going to do here, um, maybe this is overly complex, I could just save this preset without adjusting any of these sliders here. So my preset just, I, I don't want it to touch any of these. I may even end up changing some of these. I don't necessarily need the vibrance or the clarity. Um, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit the, my main preset button here then uh, once it's added here, it has adjusted these dials. Uh, I'm going to do Command A, select everything, and then Command Shift S, uh, sorry it's confusing, um, where I'm just synchronizing all of the images here. And I'm actually going to get rid of basic. So right now it is just doing everything else um, with the exception of basic. Um, I will also, I guess, maybe zero these out as well. Um, so I basically am just keeping the edit, the overall edit for, uh, I guess, color and for white balance and for exposure. Uh, I'm keeping all of that. I'm going to be happy with all of that. And then I'm going to hit synchronize. And then I'm going to, I, I guess I can just go to the next image here and then do a quick uh, previous where it'll just look exactly as the image before it. Um, so that's kind of how I do it without actually training and having the 5,000 images that are super consistent to build into the profile. Um, and also a good way for you to just kind of get your, uh, I guess, to, to make sure that this works for you and that this is a system that you like. As you can see, uh, clicking through all of the edits here. And as you can see, these would all be images uh, with the exception of why am I cutting off feet? Here's, here's a better better version. Um, so maybe that would be one that when I go through at the very end that maybe I would remove because it's pretty much a duplicate but it kind of cuts off some feet. As far as the actual edits and where all the tones are, I am super happy with the consistency of this. And quite honestly, they're probably more consistent than I would do. So say for instance, I sat down here, um, as you've probably been experiencing, the lighting has been changing outside. It's been getting brighter, it's been getting darker. The, the white balance has been changing. If I was here in the evening, I'd be going into like an evening time. And the colors and everything, well, my screen maybe will change itself and, and help me be consistent. To actually use a system like this helps you maintain even more consistency than you could really ever imagine. Um, I'll do a quick before and after. So this was my before image, and this is my after image edited and selected completely by artificial intelligence. Um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, I am pretty darn happy with this. Uh, I do have one additional step that I run on top of this, which is also an AI step as well. And uh, it is for skin smoothing. So I basically uh, load it into a program called Portraiture. I have this as an action in uh, Photoshop. You can also do it in Lightroom, um, but I basically just do a batch and I just uh, do uh, a small kind of automatic airbrush. It detects where faces are and, and where to actually airbrush. Um, here's a maybe even a better before and after. So this is the before, this is as I shot the image because I knew that there was just too much dynamic range happening in this scene. And I had to basically, if I exposed properly for them, the background would be so far gone that I couldn't recover it. So I kind of found that middle spot. And I would say for artificial intelligence to come in and just and do that, very easily. Um, I am super, super happy with it. Again, I'll give a few more before and after examples here. My before shot, that's as I shot it in my Canon R6. You can see all the settings up here on the top and then that's after. Um, yeah. So before, after, I didn't do anything. This is all just, well, Susan Stripling did thousands of hours of editing. Uh, before, after. Even shots like this, so that's the before there and that's the after. Uh, a shot that's even a little bit more artistic, I would say, because this is kind of that blue hour shot. I'm surprised that it got a shot like this, that it basically 
what I would have expected the system to do would be something like this, like let's make it look exactly like daytime and let's white balance it appropriately. I would have expected it to do that edit rather than the actual edit that it did. So I'm very impressed by that and the way that it interpreted that scene. So that gives me a lot of, a lot of confidence, I think, uh, in, in the system here. Another before and after. So this is honestly exactly as I would edit it. Um, I think Susan Stripling, I guess uh, her, her, the, her system basically is kind of that baseline edit that I've always been looking for. And then I do a little additional to that. Um, hers obviously stay maybe a little bit more clean and classic. I like kind of the tones in here. Um, that's the before. That's the after. But yeah, it is, uh, it's not a gimmick. That was my before image. That's the after image uh, selected by after shoot and, and thrown through Imagine AI. Uh, I also apologize uh, if, if you've looked at the word, you may interpret it as Imogen and I think I did for a long time. So if I've said Imogen accidentally, it's because I've been saying it in my brain for quite some time and I'm reprogramming myself very slowly. Imagine, honestly, like incredible product and it's, um, yeah, that's, uh, my takeaway is that this was like, honestly, if you're just getting into wedding photography, this will save you so much time. If I would have had these tools when I was first getting started 15 years ago, it probably would have saved me um, one year total, probably more than that, probably two years total of my lifetime that I could have devoted to things like marketing and actually uh, expanding my business and uh, just booking more stuff and shooting more and doing more personal projects. Um, yeah, really, really cool. I am very happy with it. My next step here would basically be just to go through every single image um, that was taken here and delete the ones that I don't think are kind of the, the ones that they should have. Um, obviously when you are using Aftershoot that it might select a few that you may not have selected or potentially the other way, but I haven't really noticed it leaving anything out that I need to go back and find. Um, in my experience, I go through, maybe I delete 50, 75 images total um, because there is something similar that's better or maybe um, somebody just doesn't look their best in that image. And then I go into Photoshop and I run portraiture uh, on the images as well, just smooth out skin a little bit, make people feel a little bit happier. It also does the, if you've seen the 98% trick uh, video, it gives them a little squeeze as well, 98% um, uh, width and the, the height stays the same. So everybody just feels a little bit better about themselves. And uh, then that gallery's done. So yeah, round trip from after shoot to imagine to finals, I'm gonna call that an hour. Less than an hour if I didn't have to make a video. An hour, well, 51 minutes, including making a video about both pieces of the process. I haven't yet run the portraiture uh, thing, but that usually I'm gonna say it takes another five minutes. And also this is all on a laptop that's not even plugged in. I feel like you get better performance when you are plugged in. I'm not today. That is all for, uh, for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope that you uh, at least go give this a shot. There's a link in the description if you wanna go try it, you can do that. And yeah, really, really impressed. Uh, don't forget the Focal offer for this month until the end of the month, that's the WPPI offer. Uh, if you sign up, if you want a new website, basically things are now broken out monthly. The January offer was that you had to basically pay one smaller upfront payment. Um, now you can do it monthly. So you pay $80 to secure your spot. You start the process. As soon as the month the, your website goes online, that $80 is for the first month. And then you're paying $80 per month uh, for your website. And then you also have to pay the additional, the regular subscription on top of that. Um, but that's only, you pay both of those for one year. After one year, you're just paying the regular subscription uh, and you're not paying the, the $80 per month as well. Um, so yeah, check that out. They built my website. I am super happy with it. It comes with an incredible backend that does everything you need as a wedding photographer. And uh, yeah, that is all for today. I will see you again probably a few times this week because uh, I got a lot of videos to make since I was gone for like two and a half weeks. I got lots of editing, some film photography videos, some wedding photography videos, some videos with Sam Hurd, Vanessa Joy, Susan Stripling, uh, Jerry Guiones, uh, Anita Sadowska, Eric Hercules. Man, we've done a lot. And then I'm going to be doing one with Miguel Quilas, as well as Gary Hughes, as well as Carolyn Tran, as well as Scott Robert Lim. And uh, those are all going to be coming out. That's a lot of videos. I think that's like 12 or 14 videos. Those are all going to be coming out kind of over a couple of months. Every, maybe we'll do the same as the film thing. Every Monday, those videos can come out. It's basically a day in the life with each of these individual people. Go take some photos, tell you about how they got into business, and hopefully inspire you to, I don't know, either adapt elements of what they do and, and make it part of your own and make yourself happier or to just be inspired to go out and create something. Uh, yeah, that's all for today.